Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. Let's talk about March favorites. I tried some new makeup this month and a lot of things made it to this favorites video. I also have some jewelry, nail products, hair products, and some new home favorites to share. So before we begin, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and now let's get into it. I feel like my lips could use some hydration, so let's start with my favorite lip products. I tried two new lip glosses this month. I'm familiar with both of the formulas, but I have new shades. So one of them is the Milani Keep It Full Lip Plumper. This is the shade Luminoso. This is a peachy pink with some golden shimmer. It's a very pretty color. This is the type of lip gloss that looks great over the top of any lipstick, and it also looks so pretty on its own because it has a really beautiful base color. It's not completely transparent. You can really see that peachy pink tone on the lips and it's very hydrating. It fills in the lip lines and it doesn't sink into them. So it doesn't emphasize any lines that I have. It also makes the lips just feel really hydrated and they always look nice and full when I wear this gloss. And I think I'll apply this one today. I also picked up another shade of the Maybelline Lifter Gloss. These glosses are my favorite. They have hyaluronic acid in them, so they are so hydrating on the lips. They're not sticky. They're the type of gloss that is super comfortable and just leaves your lips feeling really moisturized and juicy. This is the shade Sun, and it's described as a translucent champagne pearl. So this one doesn't have as much of a base color to it. It is pretty transparent, but it has a little bit of a golden champagne tint to it. And it's got a pearly reflect, so it's not overly shimmery, but it's got just a very slight hint of a pearly shimmer to it. And I have been loving wearing this over the top of my nude lipsticks, especially ones that have a beige undertone because like this champagne golden tint really complements that perfectly. My next favorite is the L'Oreal True Match Nude Foundation. You guys know I love this foundation foundation, but it's a favorite this month because I bought a pump for it. So this foundation normally comes with a dropper, but I got a two-pack pump on Amazon, which is great because I have two shades in this foundation, so now they both have a pump. If you've ever used this foundation, you know that the dropper it comes with can get a little bit messy. Foundation can build up around the inside of the cap, and it can just be a little bit difficult to use. This foundation isn't overly thin or serum-like in consistency, so it really does work better with a pump. I have been loving using it. One pump gets out just the perfect amount of foundation for me. One thing to note about this pump, which I haven't heard anyone else mention, is that when you receive it, the tube on the inside is a little bit too long. It will be too long to fit inside of here. So you just have to measure it up and snip off a little bit with scissors so that it fits perfectly into the bottle. They also will fit the L'Oreal True Match, just the regular True Match foundation if you have the old bottles. They do come with a pump now, but if you have the one with the cap, it will fit. So I'm just going to apply this foundation today with my sponge. I also added a pump of the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion for a little bit of extra glow. And the shade that I'm using is 1 to 2.5 Rosy Light. My next favorite that I have been wearing every single day since I got it is the EXA Color Corrector in the shade Pink. This has been incredible for color correcting dark circles and for brightening the eye area. If you have a fair or a light skin tone and you find that peach color correctors don't work for you, I feel like this shade of pink is absolutely perfect. It is incredibly brightening. It has a creamy consistency. It's lightweight, but it provides excellent coverage. As someone who has struggled with having hollow under eyes, genetically dark circles, and having very dry skin around my eyelids and my under eyes, I'm really picky with color correctors and with concealers. It's really difficult to find something that is very hydrating and yet very pigmented to hide the darkness, to fill in that under eye hollow, and not cast a shadow. And this has been the best color corrector that I've ever tried. So I'm really loving this. My next favorite are these triangle powder puffs. Having these in a triangle shape has been totally game-changing for doing my makeup. 
They are so easy to use because they have a little strap for your finger to slide into and they fit so nicely around all the contours of the face. It's really great for pushing the powder into the skin, so good for oil and shine control. And I've also been loving using this when I do my eyeliner. So typically when I do eyeliner, I hold my finger at my temple to kind of keep my skin from moving around on my eyelids. It just holds them taut. But by using the powder puff and having this rest on my skin instead of my fingers, it prevents the foundation from lifting off that I've already applied. So I really love these. I got these on Amazon in a pack of six and they came with three pink and three black, but they have all different colors to choose. My from. next favorite is this nude eye pencil that I've been using in my lower waterline. It's the Essence Extreme Lasting Eye Pencil. It's a waterproof pencil. The shade is called Silky Nude, and it is a very brightening nude pencil. I'm wearing it today, and it really helps to brighten the eyes. It makes them look bigger. I'm a big fan of using nude pencils rather than white in my lower waterline. Sometimes the white just looks a little bit too harsh, but this shade is perfect and it's very long lasting. I have very watery eyes sometimes, especially in the spring, I've got seasonal allergies. And sometimes when your eyes water, it can remove any of the eye pencil that you have on your lower waterline, but I feel like this lasts for hours. Highly recommend, it's one of the best nude pencils that I've tried from the drugstore. My next favorite this month has been cream bronzer. I've really taken a step back from powder bronzers and I just have been using my Makeup Revolution Cream Bronzer in the shade Light and also the Merit Bronze Balm in the shade Clay. I love both of these. They both apply so easily. The shade Light has a little bit of a warm undertone to it. It's been matching really nicely with my skin tone to give me some warmth, but it blends so easily into the skin. I really like using this one with a sponge, especially because it fits so well into this compact. This is a great size compact. And then the Merit Bronze Balm in the shade Clay. Now this is the second lightest shade that they have out of five shades. This one is kind of similar in shade to the Makeup Revolution. Definitely has a lot of nice golden warmth to it. Looks very neutral when I blend it out on the skin. And the Merit Bronze Balm is just a bit more sheer than the Makeup Revolution. Both of them are very easy to blend out, very silky, very skin-like. They're both so beautiful. I think I'll use the Makeup Revolution today. What I do is just go in with my sponge. This also works really well with a brush though too. I've used stippling brushes to apply it. I've used my Refer 31 foundation brush to apply. And I love that both of these have a very thin texture so they don't cling to any dry patches. My skin has been pretty normal lately, but in the depths of winter when it was very, very cold and my skin was still adjusting to the cold, it was definitely more dry, especially around the outside of the face. And this bronzer never looked dry in those areas. It always was very easy to blend out. This month was all about the blush for me. I tried eight new blushes. I'm including six of them in this favorites video. And five out of the six are cream and liquid blushes, which is like a total shock because I've always been a powder blush girl. I've said for years on this channel that I'm all about the powder blush, but things have changed. I am really, really enjoying cream blushes and I feel like it was just about finding the right formula for my skin type. So let's start with the first one. This is the Milani Cheek Kiss Cream Blush in the shade Coral Crush. This blush impressed me so much right off the bat. I love the texture. It is thin and emollient. It has that very balmy, almost greasy feel to it. But once you start blending it out into the skin, it definitely turns to a powdery finish. It dries down. It doesn't feel sticky or tacky. And it leaves the most beautiful, slightly radiant finish. 
it's a little bit dewy and it just looks so fresh and healthy on the skin. Plus this color is absolutely stunning. It's like the perfect coral, kind of like a hot pink shade. It's going to look so beautiful in the summer, but I have been loving it this whole month. So let's apply this one. I like to use a sponge. The way I do it is I pick some up and I definitely pat some off first on my hands so that it doesn't go on too pigmented on the cheeks. And then I gently tap it into the skin. I start in the center of the cheek and then blend outwards. And you can see how beautifully that color is building up. This blush also applies really nicely with the fingers too. This is just beautiful. It leaves a dewy finish, not too much, just enough. It's very pigmented, but it's easy to sheer out and it's very long lasting. So I have been loving using this this month and I know that it's going to get a lot of use all throughout the spring and summer. Next up are these blushes from Patrick Ta. These are the Double Take Cream and Powder Blush Duos. I got three of them and I fell in love with these blushes this month. We'll start with She's That Girl. This is a very soft neutral pink. This is like your perfect everyday pink blush. The powder blush is matte and then the cream blush is covered by a little plastic window which is so great because it keeps the powder out of the cream. It keeps the cream from drying out. These blushes come with a full-size mirror on the inside and the packaging is just it's so beautiful. The powder blushes are very soft and they are sheer to buildable and the cream is very thin. It's very emollient. It reminds me a lot of the Milani cream blush texture. This is the powder, this is the cream. You can wear them separately, but they really apply beautifully together with the cream layered on top of the powder. By doing it that way, it leaves the skin with a little bit of a dewy finish, and that's how these blushes are intended to be used. I do feel like they apply best that way. Next is She's a Doll, and this is a very bright pink. This is a bit more cool toned. Okay, so here's She's a Doll. This is the powder and this is the cream. And you can see compared to She's That Girl, it is cooler and brighter and it definitely looks much more vibrant on the skin. And here they are side by side. They are both incredibly beautiful. I would say on an everyday basis, I reach a little bit more for She's That Girl. It's really complimentary to my skin tone and it's a little bit softer, so it's just perfect for every day. And I also have the shade Do We Know Her. This is the most beautiful peach tone blush. The powder blush is a very soft shade of peach and the cream is a beautiful peachy coral shade. I've been having so much fun playing with these this month and I feel like they were really created with all skin types in mind. You get a matte powder blush paired with a more dewy cream finish blush. So the combination of the two works really well. They don't look overly glowy, but they leave the skin looking healthy and a little bit radiant. You can pair them together however you like. If you layer the cream over the powder, it's going to leave behind a bit more of a dewy finish. But if you decide to add the powder over the cream, then it's going to give a bit more of a matte finish to the skin. So that's really up to you on how you customize this. I also think there's an incredible shade range. This comes in eight different shades. There are some more darker, vibrant colors. There's also some more leaning towards the beige and bronze side. And I think this is an incredible value for money because for $36, you're getting essentially two full-size blushes. Another new blush to me that I've been loving is the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blush in the shade Hope. Now, this has been a very popular blush and I've been dying to try it. I got rid of all of my cream and liquid blushes during my blush declutter and I wanted to see if I could find a liquid blush that I really liked. Now this is in the shade Hope. This is a beautiful, soft, neutral shade of pink. It's pretty similar to the Patrick Ta blush in She's That Girl. And this just blends out so beautifully. It is silky smooth. It kind of feels very velvety and powdery as you blend it out and it definitely sets down. So it is extremely long lasting. It's got a radiant finish. 
Now these blushes come in both radiant and matte finishes, and this is one of the radiant finished blushes. I just absolutely love it. It is so easy to blend out with your fingers, with a sponge, with a brush. You only need one, maybe two dots with this blush. So it's an incredible value for money. This blush will last you a very long time. I really love it. It's a very unique and special formula for a liquid blush, and Selena Gomez did an incredible job with this line of blushes, which is really impressive. I feel like I'm not usually into celebrity makeup lines, but Rare Beauty is definitely something special. And then my last blush favorite is a powder blush. It's the CoverGirl Cheekers blush in the shade Pink Candy. This surprised me at how much I've been really loving this. It's a very pretty bubblegum pink. It's definitely more on the sheer side, so it takes some time to build up the color, but I really like this on days when I just want a very light colored blush. This does add a lot of vibrancy to the face because it is that cool tone pink. So it's like very fresh, very youthful looking, and it has a satin finish, so it just looks beautiful. Um, really enjoying this. Next favorite is the Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette in the shade Universal. You know when you want a makeup product for so long that once you finally get it, you're worried it's not going to live up to the expectations that you had of it? That's how I felt about this. I have been wanting it for years. I've heard so many good things about it. All the reviews, all the makeup artists that use it, I absolutely love it. So I was worried that I was going to get it and then just feel like it was so-so, you know? But no, I absolutely love this palette. I haven't been able to stop wearing it. Such a beautiful highlighting palette. I love the four shades that are in here. You can apply them separately. You can blend them all together. I love blending the pink with the white or the gold with the white and it just creates the most beautiful glow. I use it on the cheeks. I use it on the eyes. It is stunning. I've got the shades swatched so you can see all four. They are shimmery but not glittery and the thing is when you first swatch them or you first apply them there is a little bit of glitter and I think that's just the overspray. So if you do get this palette and you're worried that it's going to look glittery on the skin just gently rub your finger over the top of all the shades to get some of that initial glitter off and then it just is the most beautiful glowy highlight. My favorite thing to do has been to blend these two together and use them as a blush topper over the top of my cream blushes. And it just adds such a beautiful glow to the top of the cheek. I'll do a little sweep around the eye. I have always loved a pink tone highlighter and I feel like that's what's been missing from my highlighter collection is something with a strong pink undertone. So I'm so happy to have this. For eye makeup, I have two favorites. I'll keep them brief because I've talked about them a lot this month. One is the ColourPop Feel and Bubbly Eyeshadow Palette. And I've used this eyeshadow palette so much this month. This has easily and quickly become one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes that I have, which is saying a lot because I have a lot of eyeshadow. I love every single color that's in this palette, and I always love the quality of ColourPop eyeshadows, but I feel like both the mattes and the shimmers in this palette are exceptional quality for ColourPop. If you like having light shimmery shades that you can wear all over the lid, and a good selection of mid-tone matte neutrals, this palette has it all. And that's what I love so much about it. It's perfect for a neutral everyday look. I also really like the way they set this palette up. This row here is a perfect three shadow look with this gold on the lid, this in the crease, and then this one you can use as liner or to, you know, deepen up your look, make it a little more smoky, or you can go along this outer row. So it's set up really nicely, very user friendly, and the quality of these shadows are just perfection. Really love this. And then for eyeliner, my favorite has been the Urban Decay 24 7 waterproof liner in the shade Stash. This is a really beautiful shade of olive green with some golden shimmer to it. I love wearing a pop of color in the spring. Green is my favorite, but I tend to reach more for those deeper greens. 
greens, that like olive green, army green, it's got a little bit of grunginess to it rather than those really like bright lime green shades. So this one looks gorgeous. I'm wearing it today on my upper lash line. It's been pairing beautifully with the ColourPop eyeshadow palette and I feel like it is just something to change up my look a little, add a little bit of color. It's really complementary to my eye color so I feel like it makes the eyes pop. I feel like a colored eyeliner is a fun way to switch up your look without straying too far from your usual everyday look. Moving on to some hair favorites. I have the Big Sexy Hair Root Pump Volumizing Spray. So this comes out like a spray and it turns into a foam. I got this to add a little bit more volume to my roots. My hair is all one length except I have some shorter angles in the front but I don't have any layers so my hair often just is very flat on top, very heavy, and this has really been giving me a little bit more volume at the roots. I've really been enjoying this. I feel like it is very lightweight. I only apply a small amount. If you spray too much, it can tend to look a little bit greasy at the roots. So usually I will just lift my hair up. You use this while your hair is wet. I spray a little bit right here, and then I go a little bit further down and spray here so that I've got a little bit of volume all over. And I feel like it's got really good hold. I think for the first day after I've dried my hair and sprayed this in, I've got noticeable volume all day long. And then even on day two, there's still a little bit of volume at the root. So this has been an incredible product, really like it. I also wanted to update you on the Olaplex dry shampoo. So I have been using this dry shampoo spray all month and I do have some thoughts about it. It's not a favorite, but it's not a fail either. I think it's just okay. The claims on this are that it absorbs oil, volumizes, and it doesn't leave a sticky or white residue behind. That last part is very true. There is no white residue and my hair definitely feels clean afterwards. Sometimes dry shampoo can leave your hair feeling a bit sticky or gritty and I don't experience that at all with this. So as far as white residue and stickiness, I give it a 10 out of 10. As far as volumizing goes, I don't notice too much of a difference with volume and that may be because I'm already using the root pump spray. I feel like it does clean the hair a bit so it does add a little bit more volume to the roots, but I would give it a 6 out of 10 for volume. And then as far as absorbing oil goes, for me that is the most important part of a dry shampoo is that it makes my hair visibly look cleaner. I definitely get oily and greasy at the roots pretty quickly. I wash my hair about once every three days, sometimes four, so on days like two and three I really like to refresh the roots with dry shampoo. And this one I would give it a 7 out of 10 for that. It definitely makes a visible difference. It takes down some of the oiliness, it absorbs some of that oil without leaving a residue, but I would say usually around my hairline, typically around here, I can still see a little bit of oiliness. I would like it to do a better job with that. Um, scent wise, I really like it. It's got a very nice light fresh scent, kind of like a lemony herbal and vanilla scent all mixed together. So it is pleasant to use. It does a decent job, but over Overall, I would like to have a dry shampoo that does a little bit better job at oil absorption. I think next I want to try the Living Proof Dry Shampoo. If you've tried that, let me know your thoughts about it, and if you have any other recommendations for a really great dry shampoo, let me know in the comments. My next favorite are these Olive & June Press-On Nails. I've been wearing these all month, you'll see them in every video. These are incredible. I think the Olive and June nail glue is spectacular. I've been wearing these nails for four weeks and not one of them has fallen off. Now, I don't know, am I wearing them for too long? Probably. I'm going to soak them off today. Hopefully my nails are still in good condition, but I've never had an experience with press on nails that have lasted for this long. I really love the shape of these. These are a medium oval. I think they describe them as either an oval or almond shape. 
These originally came in the shade Pink Goldfish, so it's like a very uh, light pink shade. It's kind of color shifting, but I polished over them like midway through the month with this uh, shade. It's called It Never Ends by OPI. But the next set that I got to try is just a simple French style. This is the short size. I find these at my local Walmart. You can also find them on the Olive and June website. There's so many to choose from. I also have some home favorites. This is the newest addition to my coffee table. It's a match cloche and I got this from Amazon. It's got a little cork at the bottom so you can remove this and take the matches out from there but I keep this on my coffee table next to my candle. It's also got a little striker on the side and it's just so pretty. I love the swirl design and it looks like glass but it's actually plastic which is good because I am incredibly clumsy and if I knock this over I don't have to worry about anything breaking. I also got some new glassware for the kitchen. I have been looking for a set of tall tumblers for the longest time. I've been so picky I haven't been able to find a set that I really like and I've just been using some like mismatched glasses for years. So I found these at Kirkland's. I got eight of them. These actually come in a few different colors. I got four blue and four green. They also have orange, but they are so pretty. They've got a little bit of a hammered design all throughout and a very like subtle blue across the bottom, which translates all the way up through the glass. Um, really nice quality, heavy, but not too heavy. And they're just like the perfect size to fit in the hand. I also got the smaller size. The smaller size is about 10.5 ounces, I believe. And then the larger size is 17.5 ounces. Kirkland's is like the best store. They have the nicest stuff for the home. I feel like they do modern classics really well. Like the things they have are very timeless, but they also have like a modern element to them. These are also really affordable. I feel like Kirkland's always has a good sale going on. And then and I did get a few of these like goblet wine glasses to match. So pretty. It's just the stem that's colored and then the top part is clear. Um, so it's a fun little addition to my kitchen. I'm going to finish up with jewelry. I got some new rings this month. Both are from Amazon. One is this really pretty marquee style ring on my pointer finger and it is a half band. So the stones only go around the front, which makes it really comfortable to wear. And I would say it's true to size, maybe slightly large because sometimes a seven fits my pointer finger, but I ordered this in a six and a half and it fits perfectly. And then this here is also a new ring. I love this because it's adjustable so I can wear it on any of my fingers and it's got a little diamond stone here and a little opal on top. I got the gold band but they also have silver and a few other um, selections where instead of an opal they have one with a green stone and they also have one with a blue stone. So I love that. I love having adjustable rings where you can you know mix and match how you wear them. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I want to know what have you been loving this month? It doesn't have to be makeup. It could be your favorite TV show, your favorite book, your favorite podcast, your favorite snack. Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you again soon in the next video.